says that she loves me Isn't it lovely when the one who loves thing is the one who loves and I think that plants, I mean, for me, it's like a little bit of a peace thing too. Cause like, I feel like when you, um, I had a professor at Morehouse, this older lady, and um, she was, I was, we was talking about dating or whatever, whatever. And she said, men need a good set of glasses and they need this. And he said, and you need something, you need to be a, something in your house that you keep them alive other than just you. She's like, she was like, people want to know that you, you know, that you can actually keep something alive other than you. And I was like, what? She was like, yeah. I was like, well, I can't afford a dog yet. So I'm gonna go get a plant. Been planting ever since. Come on through a Morehouse professor with that wisdom. <laughs> I, I feel like, I feel like they don't make professors like that anymore. I aspire to be one of them professors as I was looking at my syllabus, this, uh, my syllabi, I'm teaching two classes and I'm like, I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna mix it up this, this semester. I'm gonna teach life. Yeah. I always teach life, but I'm going to go hard in the paint because I feel like we were talking with Omi on Monday, like the, the next generation of workers don't have decorum, you know, home training is like they they show up how they want to show up. I'm, I'm going to go hard in. I'm going to tell them first class. It's going to be a class. You're going to learn the ins and outs of business, the business that you want to be in. But you're going to also learn how to comport yourself on these jobs so that you can always stay employed. And if you don't like that, get out. Yep. Don't take this class. Drop it right now because we're going hard in the paint and I'm going, you know, maybe I'll have Omi come in and do a one on one, you know, have have you come and get their LinkedIn straight. Yeah. I think, yeah. We're going to do that. Karen, what's funny about that is um, I'm, I'm doing this. I, I commissioned this research at work and I'm, this is like a little preview of it is that we're talking about uh, we're talking about how you show up how you show up at work and like the nuances of like the lived experience of like black folks who strictly to have a conversation with black professionals, but we're having a conversation with black professionals in different generation groups. Right. And so I had this, um, I had this dude who was the senior vice president. I used to work for him and I had him to come talk to our, um, to our Atlanta intern class. And I had him to come talk to our um, black leadership council at my job. And he was saying all these things that he felt like you had to do about um, how you show up at work, right? And the young people went crazy. They were like, oh, it's all this respectability politics and stuff like that. Or like, I don't feel like I need to do this or do that or whatever, whatever. And I was like, and so I realized I was like, there's a gap in like the generations of how people think about this stuff. Like some of this, what some of y'all call it respectability politics. Take the politics out of it. You should be respectable at work, right? Period. Like, like Period. if you want to yes. actually get hired and stay hired, like I'm not, you ain't got to come in here tap dancing, but what you do have to do is like come in with a certain level of um, rigor and commitment to the work that you're doing. It's like, look, I've always said that like, I'm not a certain tie guy, but my work shows up long before my outfit does right so it's interesting the way people are thinking about it under for in different generations and i can't wait to see what the data says when we get it back around because i'm going to talk about code switching i'm going to talk about defining what that is what is it you know what's the difference between those things and those nuances because what i'm trying to do is get people to the point to where you can be authentic. That don't necessarily mean your whole self. Yes. Just authentic. So, so let, let's let's sit there for a minute and, and keep that energy in that mic. Cause that mic is beautiful, but it's not when you're when you're moving around. So let's let's go oh, right down bad. the barrel. My but bad. I was I've, I've been thinking about it because we had a parent call up who said she teaches her daughter to code switch. And I was like, don't do that, because now that gets the folk on the job used to that thinking that that's who she is. And then yeah. they expect everybody else to be that way. And then there's an inauthentic way in which she's not able to be express herself creatively or whatever the job is. And but, you know, at the same time, there is a decorum that we should have the way we talk. And I, I look at it like how you talk around your parents and grandparents versus your friends. Your job should be like your parents and grandparents. Doesn't mean that you aren't your full self, but yeah. you shouldn't be cussing and, and having your underwear show and all that. Because if you wouldn't be that way at home, even with your parents, then you shouldn't be that way at your job. And but I also look at it like how we travel now. Right. There was a time when when we had to get dressed up to get on an airplane. The notion of wearing sweats and sneakers or whatever y'all call them, tennis shoes, unheard of. Now, most of us are wearing pajamas. 
They yeah. lounge <laughs> on the, the planes. And, you know, some of it is a, a bit much. Some of yeah. it is a bit much. But, you know, I, I think about, you know, so we just going from point A to point B. Why well, I got to look a certain kind of way. People got on bonnets and do-rags and pajamas flying now. Yeah. And I don't know if I like it, but, you know, what, what difference does it make is the question, yeah. I guess, as these young people are asking. Yeah. I think for people in in their who are younger in their careers, I think that young black folks, one of the things that I always say to them is that my job doesn't need 3 a.m. and a visa me at the office every day. They don't need like bottomless mimosa me, but it does need my authenticity. And the difference between that is um, I may I'm going to show up and my work is going to precede me. My work is going to get more attention than my outfit or my sneakers or whatever the case is. I'm going to still show up with these lines cut in the side of my hair. I'm going to show up with I was, I was actually admiring them. I was <clears> like, <throat> you got a nice hair. Atlanta's got like the best barbers. <laughs> my, barber, my barber here is, is tight work. He's, he's a I young guy. See, too. I was like, the, the edge up and the lines are just... Mm. <laughs> doing the best I can with what I got trying to maintain you know what I'm saying I, I and I'm gonna you, show up with all three of these chains on I'm gonna you know what I'm saying like I, I'm like my dad every year every 10 years I get older I add another gold chain to it like you know what I'm saying like I all of those things but my work is gonna be stellar and I'm gonna be able to have a conversation with anybody in that space in a way that is respectful like I think we turn like respect and, and respectfulness into something uh, pejorative. And that's what people want to happen, right? Like it's one thing for somebody else to take woke, something that we that we own and, and bastardize it. But for us to take um, something that is positive, which is being respectable, right? Um, to yourself more so than the white people at work. It really yes. is about how you comport right. yourself. That's right, what, you, you're, you're what carrying that generation your, your, was your grandmother, you're carrying your ancestors in every place that you go. You are representing the community when you walk into a place. I, I agree. I, I, you know, 866-801-8255. And to that extent, if your authentic self doesn't represent the community, fix your authentic self. Be a better authentic you so that you can be representative of all of the goodness that was poured into you, you know? And if you can't do that, you got to fix something. Yeah. And that ain't about changing. That ain't about changing your hair. Right. That's not about that's not about contortion acts. Right. That is about understanding the cultures that you're in and being able to move in any space, walk, walk with uh, kings with a common touch. Right. All of those things matter to being able to be successful. And so I can't wait to see what this data says and how we gonna argue and fuss and fight a little bit about it within, um, in the groups that, um, that we're using for the data. But what I really wanna do is to get to a space to where we can, um, where we can share tools and insights to get people, like to help people like understand that. how to navigate these spaces and not give up your edges and your hairline and your peace and your, mm -hmm. And mm, all of I those things, it. right? I love it. I love it. 866-801-8255. Because the reality is just like in, in our communities, we need to have multi-generational. Like when I first got to the Daily News at 21, um, I was a bit, I wasn't ridiculous because I had on stockings. I knew how to, I had, I had a little briefcase. I got a little coach briefcase. <laughs> I showed up, I had a stockings and slip and a suit and my hair was fine. You know, like I came in, I was like, yes, sir. I would love to work here. And it's, I'm so <laughs> excited to be a part of this great, uh, just this, this, this venerable company. And I can add so much. And I did all of that. And then I got in, I was like, psych. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, this is how I am. But, you know, I just remember seeking out the elders that were there. You know, I made it my business to make sure that everybody that was had been there 10, 15, 20 years, that they knew me, that I would go to them for advice. You know, I went from everyone from HR all the way through to the editor. So I didn't just stay in my department, which made yeah. it easy for me to move around when it was time to move around because I had mentors in every department. But I sought that out. And then when I became an elder, I sought out the young people coming in. So Deneen Milner, Stephen A. Smith, all of those folks, I gathered up because I'm like, that's my responsibility. Somebody shepherd me in. I'm going to give you the ropes. If you need anything, I'm here. This is what, don't, don't go to this person. They're going to give you hell over here, but come yeah. to me if they do, I got your back. You know, but that should be the responsibility. And they, they used to call it rabbis. You know, you come in, you got to mm -hmm. find your rabbi. For me, yeah. I wasn't looking for a rabbi. I was looking for people who look just like me who survived because yeah. they knew some things. 
and they gave me some insight and I got the best piece of advice from a lady in HR. She said to me, cause you know, I was a bit rambunctious. Karen, never give up the right to be right. And I was like, what does that mean? She's like, you could be hundred percent right, but how you handle conflict here, yeah. even if you're right, you can lose your right to be right by how you handle it. And I was like, never forgot that. I'm not saying I always followed it because, you know, I'm still in my twenties, <laughs> but, but it, it stuck with me and shout out to Jared McAllister who saved my job. You know, when I came to him, I was like, they about to fire me. He was like, mm, no, they're not. Here's why. Here's what you need to know. I was like, oh. uh -huh. he was like, take out your notepad. Gave me the <laughs> yeah, chapter and verse. I was like, went into that meeting and it was Katie barred the door because I not only did not lose my job, but the people who were accusing me of stuff got in trouble. Thank no. you, Jared McAllister. That was him. Jim Harney. I mean, I can just go down a list. Joyce, Joyce Shelby, rest in peace. Maria Fugate. You know, it was so many amazing people. And I just I think about what you're doing and I think it's so, so valuable and important. So thank you. Hey, thank I you. appreciate that. I appreciate that. Um, I'm, I'm really proud of um, how I my team, my team how my team helped my the company that I work for show up for Black Women's Equal Pay Day. And like, um, we had like senior executives talking about um, talking about Black Women's Equal Pay and what that means. We opened up free LinkedIn learning courses for Black women to negotiate their salaries. We had people um, um, on platform and our, our head of our Business Strategies Institute um, in Black media, as well as Fast Company, all of those places saying, Yo, this is the this is what's happening in the market. It ain't right. We need to get to a place of pay equity. But here's what here's the tools that we feel like Black women can use, not just on our platform, but all these other negotiation tools. And um, even I, I, I quoted Tiffany Aliche when I was um, when I was talking to my team about the importance of this work. And I was talking and I was I, I read them a, a quote from Tiffany's uh, from Tiffany's book, the one right behind you get good with money. And I don't have the, I don't have it in front of me, but I read the, the quote about how um, our our women in our black women and the way that they reinvest their, their in their community and what it does to elevate the entire community when black women win and when black women are are good with money and my team was like, yo, you're talking about black stuff at work like this. This is crazy. We've never seen this before. And I was like, this is what like like there are going to be some times where we talk about stuff that's that's a whole ass negative. Right. But right. we don't panic. We pivot and you pivot with information. Ooh. That's a word. We don't panic. We, we pivot. pivot. Better say that. You know, and you awareness down. gets you the agency. Like, okay, we aware of this, but now black women know coming in that they might that that they're leaving money on the table, right? Like, what we mm -hmm. saw in the data was that black women, even when they got sort of these traditional sort of white collar jobs or whatever, that they left so much money on the table because they were thinking about salary and not total compensation, and not taking advantage of a lot of the financial tools that are available to them at these at these companies where they're working. I'll give you a perfect example. If you had worked at, say, for instance, Microsoft, the company that owns the company that I work for, um, when their stock was down six months ago, if you were an employee, you, you could do the employee stock purchase program <clears throat> and buy the stock at a discount. I think at the lowest, it was something like 180 bucks. Um, if you did the stock employee stock purchase program, you could get about the per about a 20% discount on it. You could have gotten that the stock for about 140 bucks, right? The stock is trading at 340 bucks now. So the people who actually bought stock during a downturn and mm -hmm. use the employee purchase program, that's how you build wealth, right? And so what we found was that women and people of color um, do not maximize 401k. They don't participate in employee stock purchase programs. They don't even take advantage of all of the free money that and uh, benefits that are sometimes offered at companies. And we're now talking to, to people now to say, you need to go back and have that conversation with HR and your business partners at work and make sure you get every single dollar that is afforded to you. And sometimes mm -hmm. that means giving $1 so that you can get two in terms of like investing in your 401k, because you got to give the money to get the match, but that's I love free it. I money. Love it. Yeah. yeah, I love it. I love it. 866-801-8255 is the number. Uh, listen, we, we talk in nuances here and I'm talking, uh, you know, with Drew McCaskill, who uh, we both talk very directly and 
nuanced because it's a nuanced conversation and some of it we're sussing out, you know? So the things that I'm saying about what works for me may not work for you, just like diet and exercise, you know, for you, it may be hit for me. It may be, you know, walking, you know, 12,000 steps a day. You're going to have to figure it out for yourself. But what I'm asking everyone to do is when you get in the door, you know, look out for other people. Don't just come in for yourself. Let's not be selfish on the job, but Says that she loves me. Isn't it lovely when the one who loves thing 